Irrespected brothers and sisters, young and elders, welcome back to the stories of an Anbiya. And tonight, with the introduction of the story of Hadrat Musa alayhi salam. And inshallah, I would like to answer through the talk four questions. Number one, what is the difference between the following terms? Bani Israel, Al Asbat, the Hebrews, and the Jews. These terms are used quite often, so we would like to differentiate between them. Question number two Why did the Pharaohs end up enslaving the children of Israel? And question number three, why we selected to tell the story of Musa alayhi salam right after the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And number four, how are these two stories, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and the story of Musa alayhi salam are interrelated. So let us start. The ulama say, Kad al-Qur'an an yakuna Musa. The Quran almost has converted into Musa, have become Musa. <laughs> Which means that the story of Musa السلام, is mentioned frequently. Is it repeated? No. Allah does not repeat anything. These are different scenes, different segments of the story of Musa السلام, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts inside the surah. So every scene has to do with the general theme, with the main objective of each surah. Musa alayhi salam was mentioned 136 times in the Quran, in about 25 places in different surahs. Musa alayhi salam was mentioned when he was an infant, his mother breastfeeding him. He was mentioned when he was young and, and youth. He was mentioned when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him and he got married. He was mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the nubuwat when Allah revealed to him. He is mentioned as the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Bani Israel and to Fir'aun. And he was mentioned alone without Bani Israel in Surah Al-Kahf with Al-Khidr as a student. And the ulama say that there is a great significance to that. Think about it. We have Surah Al-Isra, which is also called the Surah of Bani Israel. Then we have Surah Al-Kahf. Then we have Surah Maryam. Hmm? Surah Al-Isra is about bringing justice back to Baytul Maqdis. What happens after that? A Dajjal will come. Which is Surah Al-Kahf. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whosoever recites the first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kahf will be protected from a Dajjal. Then what comes after that? Isa ibn Maryam will come down and kill the Antichrist and that is Surah Maryam. Al-Isra, Al-Kahf, and then Surah Maryam. Now Musa alayhi salam was mentioned alone in Surah Al-Kahf because Surah Al-Kahf comes right after Surah Al-Isra. In Surah Al-Isra, it's about Bani Israel. The Surah is also called the Surah of Bani Israel. So after that is finished, after that is done, the invitation to Bani Israel is to become like Musa, students of Islam, following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See the relationship, the beautiful relationship of the Quran. So Allah mentioned Musa alayhi salam as a student in Surah Al-Kahf because that Surah comes after Surah Al-Isra. So it is an invitation, Bani Israel, this is your Surah, you know, you have to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become student and humble like Musa alayhi salam. 
Okay, let's define very important terms. The first term is Bani Israel. And this term is mentioned in the Quran frequently. What does it mean? Israel alayhi salam is Yaqub alayhi salam, right? Israel is Yaqub alayhi salam. So Bani Israel are the children of Yaqub alayhi salam, starting with Yusuf and his brothers and down until we reach Yahya and Zakaria and finally Isa alayhi salam with that lineage. So Bani Israel is not a religion. Bani Israel is nisbat to a father. It's a relationship to a father who is Israel, who is Yaqub alayhi salam. Among the children of Israel are Muslims. Among the children of Israel are Christians. And among the children of Israel are Jews. But the majority are Muslims. The majority of Bani Israel, alhamdulillah, have accepted Islam through the ages. Some of them are Christians and the minority are Jewish. And some of them are atheists and don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Bani Israel, and this is important when we talk about Musa alayhi salam, it is an invitation to these people to come back to the oath of Israel alayhi salam, who is Yaqub alayhi salam. Israel means Israel, the pact with Allah. So Yaqub alayhi salam was given the pact and everyone that came through his lineage, through his descendants, must give that pact and obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second term is al-asbat. Who are the two asbat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam? As mentioned in the Islamic tradition, who are the two asbat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? The two asbat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam are Al-Hasan and al Hussein, which means that the word Sept in Arabic means a grandson and whatever generation comes after that. So Yusuf and his brothers are the children of Yaqub. Al-Asbat are the children of these brothers and their lineage, their offspring, their children. So Al-Asbat are the grandchildren of Yaqub alayhi salam. How about the Hebrews? The term Hebrew comes from the Arabic Ibrani, Al-Ibraniyun. And this was an incident, people who passed from one area to another area. It does not have to do with any religion. It does not have to do with any race. Matter of fact, these were different groups that were passing from one side to another side, crossing deserts, crossing seas, crossing rivers, and they were called Hebrews, al ibraniyun So al ibraniyun doesn't have to do with religion. Now, the only term in these terms that has to do with a specific religion is Yahud, Jewish, Jews. So Judaism is a faith. Judaism is a deen. Judaism is a religion. And you are going to find people from different races. You find American Jews, European Jews, even Arab Jews. So Judaism is not a race, it's not a blood, it is a religion. Very good. Now let's go to ask a very interesting question. Why did the pharaohs enslave the children of Israel? We left the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, mashaAllah. He was put on the treasures of the earth. He became one of the kings of Egypt. He had authority. The king said, Yusuf, come to me and I will make you exclusively for me. You are going to be my helper. So people embraced faith. People came to Islam. People were with Yusuf alayhi salam. Everything was okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Yusuf solved the problem. So what went wrong? What happened? Uh, there are many reasons why the children of Israel became slaves to the pharaohs. Number one, Imam Ibn Kathir mentions in his book, Qasas al Anbiya, the stories of the prophets, that when Ibrahim alayhi salam went with Hajar, I'm sorry, went with Sarah, his wife Sarah, went to Egypt 
and the Pharaoh of Egypt wanted Sarah for himself and he wanted the sin with her and she refused and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected her by paralyzing that king. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Ibrahim alayhi salam, tell your people, tell your kids that one of the children of Israel, your lineage through Ishaq and Yaqub will come and make justice in the land of Egypt and he will finish the unjust pharaohs. Of course, that child was not Yusuf alayhi salam because at the time of Yusuf alayhi salam, there was the kings, the Hyksos, not the pharaohs. Remember this, at the time of Yusuf alayhi salam in Egypt, the rulers were the kings that came from far away and they defeated the pharaohs and they ruled the north part of Egypt. So the pharaohs knew that there was a prophecy among the children of Israel that someone will bring justice, someone will finish the injustice in their land. The second main reason, the children of Israel were the helpers of the Hyksos, the kings. When Yusuf السلام, came, the king made him a minister, the king made him a king, and he was in charge. So the pharaohs did not like that. Although Yusuf السلام, did the khair, he did good, he spread hidayah, he spread guidance, he spread justice, and he solved the drought for everyone. So Yusuf السلام, did excellent job, he is Nabiullah, he is the Rasulullah. But the pharaohs did not like that the children of Israel remained the helpers of the Hexos after the death of Yusuf alayhi salam. Another reason, the children of Israel had different aqidah, different faith, different religion, which is Tawheed. So when the pharaohs came, especially the Pharaoh of Musa, uh, he said, I don't like this. Why? Because he is calling everyone that he is he said, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. Now, the children of Israel are saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only Rabb. And Fir'aun now saying, no, I am your Rabb. And not just any Rabb, he's, he's saying, Ana Rabbukum al-A'la. I am your highest Lord. I am your highest love. Astaghfirullah. So, of course, he is going to enslave the children of Israel because they were the ones spreading Tawheed, the ones spreading Iman in Egypt. Fourth reason, the Pharaoh saw in his dream that a fire came from the area of Baytul Maqdis into Egypt, burnt all the houses of the Egyptians, the Pharaohs, but none of the houses of the children of Israel was burnt. So now he called his advisors. They said, well, remember the prophecy that the children of Israel used to say that one of their children will come and ruin your kingdom and make justice. So it seems like this is the time of it. And now this dream is explaining the whole thing. So what happened? That was the moment that Fir'aun said, I'm going to kill every newborn boy among the children of Israel. And that's how the dilemma started. Some of the, the Mufassirun say that he killed a hundred thousand children. Some give it other estimates, higher and lower. The point of it is that Musa alayhi salam was sentenced, sent, sentenced to death before he was born. <laughs> Can you imagine? Huh? He was sentenced to death before even he was born. And Pharaoh was not using his mind. Because if this is the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he should know that he cannot stop it. And if this was just a myth that people are repeating, then he didn't have to worry about it. But the Egyptians came to the Pharaoh and said, look, you are killing the youngsters of Bani Israel. Soon, 
we will not have people to work with us and serve us and work in the land. Uh, we need servants. So we need to come up with a solution. So the solution was that they would kill the children of the children of Israel for one year and leave them for another year. So one year to kill and one year to not kill. One of the years that was free of killing, Harun السلام, was born. In the following year, it was the turn of Musa السلام. Why are we talking about Musa as a link, as a continuation to Yusuf السلام? The reason is, and I'm going to take you a little bit forward now, when the believer of the family of Pharaoh came and talked to the Pharaoh and his family, he said, and remember when Yusuf came to you, but you were in doubt of his risala, of his message. What does that mean? That Yusuf السلام, was sent to the children of Israel, his family, but also to the Egyptians, to the Pharaohs. And this was a, a reminder from this man to the Pharaoh and all his people. He is saying, look, the story of Musa السلام, looks like the story of Yusuf السلام. and Yusuf is not far from you. So you should understand that if it is the will of Allah to bring Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him victory. Remember that Yusuf solved the problem and helped the king. So Fir'aun used Musa as your ally, just like the king of Egypt, the Hexos, used Yusuf السلام, as his friend and ally. This was the message. He said, don't fight Musa, use him. He is coming to solve your problem. Remember the story of Yusuf. The story of Musa is identical to the story of Yusuf. So use him, huh? be on his side. Do not oppose him. If you go with him, Allah will give you all khair. If you oppose him, then destruction will be yours. That's why this believer of the family of Fir'aun in Surah Ghafir, which also called Surah Al-Mu'min, referring to the Mu'min of Al-Fir'aun. That's why he was talking about Yusuf alayhi salam. So now let's make a little comparison between the story of Yusuf alayhi salam and the story of Musa alayhi salam. How does Surah Yusuf start? It starts with the ayah, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ The word, Qasas. And there is a surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Qasas. What does Surah Al-Qasas talk about? The birth of Musa alayhi salam. Subhanallah. So this is the first link that the ulama and some brothers who worked with the tafsir are establishing. This is the first link. Surah Yusuf starts, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ This is the best of the stories. أَحْسَنُ الْقَصَصِ And the birth of Musa is in Surah Al-Qasas. Surah Yusuf talks about Yusuf السلام, coming from the vicinity of Baytul Maqdis to Egypt. Musa السلام, went from Egypt finally to the vicinity of Baytul Maqdis. In Surah Yusuf, the father is mentioned in the entire story, but the mother is not. In Surah Al-Qasas, the mother of Musa is mentioned, but the father is not. In Surah Yusuf, Ya'qub the father, is afraid to lose his son. In Surah Al-Qasas, the mother of Musa is afraid to lose her son. In Surah Yusuf, the danger is coming from inside the household of, of Ya'qub, the brothers of Yusuf. In Surah Al-Qasas, the danger is coming from outside, from Fir'aun and his soldiers. In Surah Yusuf, Ya'qub السلام, was separated from his son because of the brothers of Yusuf, 
alayhi salam. In Surah Al-Qasas, Musa was united with his mother because of the sister. In Surah Yusuf, there was a plan uh, to take Yusuf away from his father without his father being aware. In Surah Al-Qasas, the mother of Musa, because of the wahi of Allah, which I will talk about, she voluntarily with, his, with her own hands put Musa السلام, in the water. In Surah Yusuf, Yusuf was put in the water, the will of water. In Surah Al-Qasas, Musa was put in the river, in the water. In Surah Yusuf, Yusuf was separated from his father for a long time. But Musa السلام, was separated from his mother for a very short time. In Surah Yusuf, Yusuf السلام, was picked up by a caravan and sold as a slave and finally he ended up as a slave in the palace whereas Musa uh, he started in the palace and then finally he went away running away from the pharaohs so Yusuf alayhi salam started in the Bedouin you know in the in the area of Palestine being a shepherd and finally ended up in the palace but Musa السلام, started in the palace and he ended up in Median being a shepherd in Surah Yusuf the man who bought Yusuf said to his wife take care of him and he literally said perhaps he would benefit us or we will take him as a son adopted son in Surah Al-Qasas, the exact same words were said by the wife of the Fir'aun. She said, perhaps he will benefit us or we take him as an adopted son. In Surah Yusuf, he had a problem and a temptation and tribulation inside the palace. In Surah Al-Qasas, Musa السلام, had the problem when that Israeli called him to help him and by mistake he killed the Egyptian. It was outside the palace. In Surah Yusuf, the women were against Yusuf السلام, but the men were divided. Some of the men were with him like his father, his other brother, the witness, Al-Aziz, the king, the two companions of the prison. Uh, the men were divided, but the ladies were against Yusuf. All the ladies were against Yusuf. In Surah Al-Qasas, all the ladies were with Musa, السلام, his mother, his sister, the wife of the Pharaoh, the two ladies that he saw in Median, and one of them became his wife. So mashallah, the fikr of the ladies saved Musa <laughs> And the men were also divided. Some of them were with Musa and some of them were against Musa <laughs> Yusuf <laughs> did not make any mistake and he ended up in the prison. Musa <laughs> before he became the Prophet of Allah, he made a mistake and he was free. The witness was with Yusuf alayhi salam. The witness was against Musa alayhi salam. And to end the comparison, Yusuf was a messenger to Bani Israel and the Egyptians, and Musa alayhi salam was a messenger to Bani Israel and the Egyptians. Yusuf alayhi salam started as a slave and his brothers wanted to throw him away but he ended up the chief of the palace Musa السلام, started as the prince and the chief of the palace and he ended up running away from the pharaoh what is the point the point 
that Musa alayhi salam is the continuation of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And as you have seen in this comparison, their stories are very much alike. They are complementary. That's why when Musa alayhi salam was leaving to the Holy Land, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, take your people and go to the Holy Land, he consulted with one of the elder ladies of Bani Israel. And she was supposed to show him the grave of Yusuf alayhi salam, so he may take Yusuf with him. Subhanallah. And Rasulullah made ikram to an old man. So that old man said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm happy to see you. So Rasulullah said, Ask me. So that man asked for camels and sheep and you know, material things. So Rasulullah told the Sahaba, I'm wondering, didn't this man have the chance to be like the elder lady of Bani Israel? So the Sahaba asked, what about the elder lady of Bani Israel, Ya Rasulullah? So Rasulullah said, she asked Musa for something great. The story was that Musa salam wanted to know where was the grave of Yusuf salam. So that lady knew where was the grave of Yusuf salam. So Musa said, show me the place of Yusuf. She said, I will not show you the place of Yusuf until you fulfill my desire. So Musa salam said, what's your desire? She said, Ya Musa, I would like to be your companion in Jannah. <laughs> so Musa said, anything else? She said, no, I would like this. This is my request. This is the only request and the only thing that I would like to, to have in order to tell you the place of Yusuf. So Musa salam, made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that older lady of Bani Israel his companion in Jannah. And then she showed them the place of the grave of Yusuf alayhi salam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam is telling this Bedouin who made ikram to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, ask me, that man could have asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam to be his companion in Jannah. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam brought the story. So a big lesson here is very important, which is when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in the famous occasions, the special occasions like these 10 days of the Hijjah, we should ask big. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ بِوَجِهِ الْكَرِيمِ فَاسْأَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوْسَ الْأَعْلَى Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, huh? if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his generous face, then ask him to admit you in the highest place in Jannah, which is Al-Firdawsu Al-A'la. So Musa alayhi salam was born. In this strange ahwal, sentenced to death before even he was born. So the soldiers of the Pharaoh are always searching. Some ulama of tafsir say that ladies used to go and check for the newborn children of Israel and bring them to the Pharaoh to be killed and they would be paid highly. So between the soldiers, between these ladies, between all the ahwal, everybody is looking for the newborn children of Israel to be killed as the Pharaoh commanded. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us yaqeen that we must have certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb and He is in charge of everything. If a zillion Pharaohs decide to kill Musa, Musa will not be killed. Matter of fact, Musa will grow up in the palace of the Pharaoh. Can you imagine? He is killing thousands of kids to eliminate the chance of Musa السلام, to live. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not only make Musa live, but Musa lived inside the palace of Pharaoh next to him. 
Pharaoh became the custodian and the protector of Musa. La ilaha illallah. This is the yaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. So Musa salam was born. His mother was afraid. Yeah? Subhanallah. She is trying to hide Musa. But she is in constant dua and yaqeen that whatever she does will not work except with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she knew that with a very small plan or even without a plan, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come to her aid, then everything will be successful and everything will be okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating in his book. He says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضِعِي Musa was born. The first command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in the heart of his mother is to breastfeed him. Why? So Musa can remember this milk. This milk will be the attachment to bring him back to his mother. SubhanAllah. So Allah put in her heart, breastfeed him. فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ If you become afraid about Musa, فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْ Throw him in the river. Can you imagine? I mean, think about it. Any mother in the world, when she becomes afraid about her children, what does she do? She grabs them. She takes them in toward herself, toward her chest, and she hugs them. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given this mother a great yaqeen up to the point that she is going to put Musa with her own hands in the water in the river. Because she has yaqeen on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because she was a believer. The first word that this ayah is starting with is awhayna. So the mufassirun differed in the meaning of the word awhayna. How was this wahi? Some of them said it was a dream. Some of them said that no, it was Jibreel alayhi salam who took the form of a human being. Just like the angels came to many human beings in the form of human beings and he talked to her. Whatever the case was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the order and she fulfilled that with perfect yaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي Do not fear and do not become sad. What is the difference between the emotion of fear and the emotion of sadness? The emotion of fear has to do with the future. And the emotion of sadness has to do with the past. So when we lose something valuable, we feel sad. And if we are anticipating something in the future, and we are worried about it, we become afraid. So the emotion of sadness has to do with the past, and the emotion of fear has to do with the future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about his awliya, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Certainly the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not grieve, will not become sad, nor they will fear. The emotion of sadness about the loss in the past and the emotion of fear of what is coming up in the future. So this lady was among the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the tranquility just like he has given the tranquility to Ya'qub alayhi salam, the father of Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا رَادُّوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَاعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Mother of Musa, we will bring him back to you. Not only that, he will become the messenger of Allah. That's why some of the ulama say that she saw a dream. That she saw a dream. Remember the dream that Yusuf alayhi salam told his father? 
And his father knew that the father and the mother and the brothers will bow down in respect to Yusuf, which means that Yusuf was going to be Rasulullah, higher than his father Yaqub. And now the mother of Musa is receiving this news. Don't worry, do not be sad or afraid. We will bring Musa back to you and he will be the messenger of Allah. In Surah Taha, Allah paints another scene. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musa, we have revealed to your mother. إِذْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّكَ مَا يُوحَى What was the wahi? أَنْ إِقْذِ فِيهِ فِي التَّابُوتِ فَقْذِ فِيهِ فِي الْيَمَّ The mother of Musa received the information. Put Musa in the casket, in the box, and then put the box in the water. فَلْيُلْقِهِ الْيَمُّ بِالسَّاحِرِ So the water should throw and cast the box to the shore. What was that? An order from Allah to the river. This is what the ayah is saying. فَلْيُلْقِهِ This is a command word in Arabic from Allah to the river. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, River, take this box to the palace of Fir'aun and then put it exactly on the shore. Just like the fire of Ibrahim السلام, was under the command of Allah, this river is under the command of Allah. Everything is under the command of Allah. Allah said, river, take the box and put it exactly in front of the palace of Fir'aun. Some of the Mufassirun say that the river stream was going this way and the box of Musa was going the opposite way. How? The power of Allah, the yaqeen on la ilaha illallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَأْخُذْهُ عَدُوٌّ لِي وَعَدُوٌّ لَهُ The one who is going to pick him up is the enemy of Musa and the enemy of Allah, meaning Fir'aun. In Surah Al-Qasas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُوًّا وَحَزَنًا So the family of Fir'aun picked him up and he will become to them a source of enmity and destruction. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains, إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا كَانُوا خَاطِئِينَ Certainly, Fir'aun and his minister Haman and their soldiers were in extreme sin. You know, one of the ulama, famous alim from uh, the area of Al Maghrib Al Arabi, his name was the Dido, very famous alim. He said, The story of Musa talks about tyranny, the elements of tyranny. Huh? Fir'aun was the chief of injustice. Who was helping him? His minister. He is addressing the kings and the governors. He says, the Salim says, take good people next to you. Don't make your minister a bad person. Just like Fir'aun took Haman. You know there is a, a joke about Fir'aun and Haman. One day, Fir'aun was addressing everyone and he said, Ana Rabbukum al I am your highest lord. Then everybody left and Haman came back and he knocked the door. So Fir'aun said, who is it? So Haman said, if you were the highest Lord, then you would have known. <laughs> if you are Allah, if you are the Lord, if you are the Rabb, then you would know who is on the door. <laughs> Why are you asking? You know, simple logic, subhanAllah. If Fir'aun was Allah, he would have known who is knocking on the door outside. Simple logic. So Haman knew that Fir'aun was a joker, right? He was somebody who just wanted to use the resources to enslave the people. Huh. So Fir'aun was the tyrant, his helper and minister was Haman. Who was in their aid? The magicians before they became believers. What did the magicians do? What was the job of the magicians? The job of the magicians was to make people believe that Fir'aun was God. Who is doing this role nowadays? The media. <laughs> the media. The magicians of today. The media, subhanAllah. Uh, then 
you have someone from Bani Israel supporting the regime of the tyrant Pharaoh. Who was that man in the story of Musa? Money talks. Qarun. Qarun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qarun was of the children of Israel. Kana min qawmi Musa. He was of the qawm of Musa. He was of the children of Israel. Yet, he was a helper of the Pharaoh against his own people. In one of the ayat that I will explain later, inshallah, in future sessions about the story of Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the mala of Bani Israel, the highest people in Bani Israel, were with Pharaoh against their people. Allah says it in the Quran. Subhanallah. And finally, you have the soldiers, the followers of Pharaoh. And Musa alayhi salam and his brother Pharaoh and the Mu'min of Al Pharaoh represent people of Dawah who are calling everyone to the straight path to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So subhanallah, that little box driven by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just landed on the shore. The helpers of the wife of the Pharaoh, those ladies, saw that box. And they saw the box going specifically to a certain place of the palace. So they started to wonder, what's this? This box is strange. Going, going against the current, you know, going specifically to the palace, we will not touch it. This might be a test or something for us. We want to call our first lady. So the wife of the Pharaoh was the first lady of Egypt. Subhanallah. Ah, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen her as an example for the believer men and women. And Allah puts forth as an example for the believers, men and women, the wife of the Pharaoh. She was the first lady of the palace, yet she decided to believe in Musa السلام, and she put everything behind for the sake of Allah. What a great lady, what a great example for all believing men and believing women. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So they called the first lady of the palace, the first lady of Egypt. She came and she opened the box. And there was a beautiful, smiley boy. Immediately Allah used the soldier of love and he put that in the heart of the wife of the Pharaoh. Love is one of the soldiers of Allah. Just like fear is a soldier of Allah. Matter of fact, everything in the creation is a soldier of Allah. So if we obey Allah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easily can make everything a soldier for us, defending us. And if we disobey, who can prevent except the mercy of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses our own bodies as soldiers against us? At the last day of judgment, Allah will do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, mouth closed, hands, skin, feet, talk. So they will talk and they will say everything. So the person now is allowed to talk. He will start or she, they are talking to their body parts. They will say, we were trying to defend you. Why are you testifying against us? Said, Allah that made everything that speaks speak, made us speak. So Allah used the soldier of love. He put the love of Musa in the heart of the wife of the Pharaoh, the first lady. She was in love with him. She got crazy with him. And Allah's qadar made it so that the Pharaoh could not have children with his wife. So now, this boy is coming 
to the palace. She is excited. She is happy. She is in love with the boy. She wants the boy. What was the first statement? Do not kill him. Which means they were about to kill Musa. Qalat la Do not kill him. Then she went to the Fir'aun. She said, Qurratu aynin li walak. Let him be a source of tranquility of an eye. This is an Arabic expression which means something dear to our heart. Like Rasulullah said, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي My tranquility is in salah. وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ The wife of the Pharaoh is saying, Musa, this boy, let him be قُرَّةُ عَيْن Our tranquility, our happiness. Pharaoh said, for you, yes, for me, I don't care. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah. His heart was closed since the beginning, and he is a very, very harsh man. We are about to finish. So Pharaoh said, okay, don't kill him. And she asked Pharaoh, please, allow this boy to become our son. And he said, okay, you know, he wants to please the first lady. So he let it go. He didn't like it, but he <coughs> let it go. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last scene promised the mother of Musa to bring him back to her. The baby is hungry. And the wife of the Pharaoh doesn't have milk. She, she is not you know, pregnant or she, she, is not, she did not give birth. She doesn't give birth. So now everybody like crazy. Look for women to breastfeed the young boy. And they are calling on everyone. Now everyone is moving around to serve Musa alayhi Allah made it so that the palace and the soldiers and everybody in the palace, men and women, servants, everyone is like crazy. They are going outside, inside, they are shouting, please, we need somebody to breastfeed this boy. Why? Because Allah put the love of that boy in the heart of the first lady. SubhanAllah. That's Allah. So now every lady is coming hoping for the gifts and the money and you know the, the status. I am going to breastfeed this boy who is the first lady is in love with and everybody is trying. And Musa salam is remembering that first sip of milk that he had from his mother. So anytime he touches the milk of any other lady, he throws it away and he says, wow, I will not accept it, you know? No acceptance, I will not accept it. And he's crying, he's crying, he's crying. And every woman is trying, every woman is trying. Now, the sister of Musa salam, was following the box. And she saw from far away that that box went to the palace. When the news got to the mother of Musa, she was so scared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In kadat latubdibihi. She was about to go and say, He is my son, and I put him in the river. I was afraid. She was going to make him probably getting killed. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made her heart firm. This is another lesson in this story, my dear respected brothers and sisters, young and elders. When great things come, the connection with Allah is the best solution. Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our heart firm, then we will be able to cope with any situation. Literally it means Allah tied up with iman, huh? with belief, with yaqeen on her heart. No, be patient. So now the sister of Musa is trying to figure out what's going on. So she heard that this young boy is not accepting the ladies who are trying to breastfeed him. So she went quickly to the palace and said, I can tell you about a family who can breastfeed him and they will take care of him and they are very good people. They said, how do you know? He said, well, we are giving it a try. <laughs> we want to give it a try. We are going to, you know, we also want the money. <laughs> 
So the mother of Musa was brought to the palace of Pharaoh. She took Musa. He remembers that sib and he breastfed from his mother. Now look at this. The mother of Musa was afraid. Allah reunited her with her son. Now she is going to get paid for breastfeeding her own son. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even given the mother of Musa rizq. Gifts. What do you want? Do you want to stay at the palace? He said, no, no, I have family. I need to go back. I need to take him with me. Okay, no problem. What do you need? Money, food, shelter, clothes. What do you need? Everyone and everything now is at the service of Musa and his mother because of her yaqeen, because of her iman. And I would finish with this segment of the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَرَدَدْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ كَيْ تَقَرَّ عَيْنُهَا وَلَا تَحْزَنْ وَلِتَعْلَمَا أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ This is the conclusion of the first scene. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have reunited, returned Musa to his mother. So her eye becomes delight, which means that she becomes tranquil and happy again. وَلَا تَحْزَنْ And she would not grieve or feel sad. وَلِتَعْلَمْ And she might increase in yaqeen and knowledge. What? أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ That the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always true. The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always true. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But unfortunately, the majority of people don't know don't realize or don't have the yaqeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the yaqeen of the mother of Musa and the great believers. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen. Wa salamu alaykum.